ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of Islam Software Solution Presentation. We will going to be talking about the manufacturing model, the one for manufacturing industry. I'm going to share my screen now. Now, welcome to the presentation of the manufacturing model of digital software solution. The manufacturing process solution is now presentation of one of the parameters that we're going to be using. And that's what we have on the screen now. Under this module definition, we have most of the items defined here. Modify under the support of modification. And for any of this module that require dual authorization, then do authorization under the solution module. All various of online inquiry about data and the system customized into a report can be viewed under this submodule called inquiry. And then services is where most of the items that most of the processes that we do in manufacturing are under the sub module called services. So let's start from here. And I'm going to start from group code. And ignore the generic ad hoc report because it's not relevant for now. This is relevant only anytime we're doing data or we'll come back to that later. So group code, we have just the code and description. This is where we define various groups that our items, our products can belong to, including our income group and expense group. We use this to determine which account system is going to post transaction based on the group that that product belongs to. So here, the only thing we do here is we enter the, the code, we start define whatever code we give, then we group description, that description of that code. Now, leaving this, we have identity mode. This is also similar. We're saying that various type of uh, identity that our customer can, I mean, that's accessible to us. We define them here so that where we need to take identity of the customer, whatever we have defined here will be available for us to pick from. Identity mode means either we're talking about driver license, international passport, voter's card, and so on. Just give a code, I'll give a description. And that's finish that part of definition. Now, moving ahead again, manufacturer master. Here, what do we do? This way we define all the various suppliers or manufacturer that we deal with. By this, we mean people that we can always give uh, local purchase order so as to get us our raw materials or our products that we actually deal with. It depends on what the manufacturing industry is into. Here, if I take the specific example that we have here, for food processing industry, definitely they will need raw materials which is to process their finished products. So here, all the various supplier that we can always deal with, we define their information here. Things like giving the manufacturer a code, what line of business that manufacturer are involved in? If you ask a registration number, that is a CAC, Corporate Affairs Commission registration number, which country is incorporated. If you know the word of that company, the title of the MD, the short name of the company. Here, we gather all the relevant information that we can, I mean, uh, gather from our supplier. Like uh, we said, this is not exhaustive. After implementation, if any of our customer is looking for additional information before or even before implementation, it can be added during implementation. Therefore, now we have things like registration number, incorporation country, title of the MD, full name of the MD. If they have offshore address, there are two line addresses. There are offline address one, offline address two, then local address one, local address two, country, region, state, local government, fax, incorporation date website, email address, and so on and so forth. So we define for our manufacturer or supplier in this place. 
let me retreat again. When I say supplies from manufacturer, we're talking about people that we get our supply from. Either finished products that we're into, as if we sell, or raw material that we use to make production. Now, living days, we also have requisition type. This is just the type of requisition that we can make. Something that is user defined. We just create all these avenue. Like we have different type of requisition. You define them here. So anytime requisition is being made, you can select from the available option. Now, I will, I'm not going to all this detail now, but we'll see by the time we go into services that we rendered or manufacturing industry, we see where we'll call up some of these items that we are defining there. So they are online parameters, necessary parameter that will be defined once and can only be modified later for whatever reason under modification sub module, which I pointed out here earlier. Now, product master where we define all the type of products that we deal with. If you look at this product master definition now, you can see we have a code, we have a type. It means any product we are defining must have a type. So for the purpose of uh, convenience here, product type in the manufacturing industry can be a finished product, which is what we virtually sell, what we have manufactured. It can be raw material, which is the raw, raw source that we use into production. It can also be an intermediate product, something that we need to get first before we get the finished product. So every product, every product we define will have a type which <clears throat> we select from wherever we're defining the product. Give the product a short name, a full name, group code. That is the group code we defined before. What kind of groups does this product we are defining belongs to? You put the group code there, and they put the definition. Now, the group code, if it is defined from that definition initially, here yeah, you just make use of it. You get the list of available group code, and then you choose the one you want, and it comes with your description. There is one flag here called complementary flag. This is checkbox item. You check it, it means this product is not for sale, it's only complementary. If you don't check it, it's a product that we're going to be selling. Then when is the product uh, start date? That is, this product, when do you start dealing with this product? That is what start date means. And you enter the date in this format. Date, double digit, uh, month, three digits, a year, four digits. Then if this product is only for a promo product that will last for a short of period, they will put the end date. In which case, after the end date, then that product will not be available for you to use. So what we're saying here is that Product can have a start date and end date if we want to use our product for a limited period. In any case, most of the products will have no end date. But as long as we deal with that product, there will be no end date kept open. Then, manufacturer code. Like I said, this column is called manufacturer code. Is you pick from the list of manufacturers or supplier, which I've defined earlier, meaning that this product is being supplied by so so person. That we find earlier where I said manufacturer to supply maintenance. So what we just do here when we're defining product is to select it and then select the code and it comes with the name. The measurement unit. This one is also defined before now. What is the unit of measurement of this product? Is it unit that is one, two, three? Is it in carton? Is it in tons and so on and so forth? This will have been defined somewhere else to just pick it up from there. And then the, the code will come with the name, sales price. The product you are defining, you give a price that you're going to be selling that product if it is a finished product. What do you mean by that? Because you know here we said we're going to define the type of the product. If the product is not a finished product that you are selling, then you'll be talking about selling price. In any case, if you are not selling, Whatever it is, if that product is something that you are purchasing, you are buying, that must have a cost price. So the cost price is indicated here. If there's a discount on this product, what this discount allow flag is doing is that this is normally used 
anytime the product we are getting from our supplier is product we are selling directly, maybe without adding any input to it, in which case the supplier is giving us at a discount. The supplier has a price that is expected to sell the product in the market. So you only give us discount, just like we are an wholesaler. So in this case, whatever discount that's given to us, what's indicated here, what we only do with this, is it make it easy for us to realize our income. Once you have the sales price and the cost price, or you have the sales price and discount, what good thing is that we don't use the two together. If we say discount, discount allowed, yes, then the discount given to by the professor, by the supplier will be entered there and the cost price will come. And if it's cost price that we know, we put the cost price here, the system will compute the discount rate based on the percentage of the sales price. So we either use discount rate or cost price, but not do it at the same time. Once you pick one, system there is the second one. Let me explain again. I said we use this part only when we know that what the supplier is giving to us is at a particular cost, and we're going to sell at a particular price. So we make use of this so that we'll not be looking at the income against expense to calculate our profit. The profit or the, the, the profit on this particular item that has a, a discount rate and cost price is realizable. realizable immediately we make a sell. I mean, we make, we make sale on it. What we're saying in essence is that the product that you define that has a discount allowed and discount rate, you can easily compute the income from individual sales of that item. Now, here we have some of the parameters here that are not necessarily applicable to manufacturing industry. Things like distributed and location. Location is just like a branch, transformable, uh, transform mode. These are only useful if we have products that over a period of time can become another product, where it is applicable to the family distance. So this is where we use this as parameters of product that we're defining. An example is in the poultry farming business, uh, the day old chicken. Those are the small chicken that can eventually become layers, broiler, and so on. They were first defined as day old when they, they are uh, received from the supplier. The over time, we know after some months, which we, the, we assume that the poultry farmer know the, the period they can become another product. Then here is where we, we indicate that, okay, this product is transformable because for a period of time, what we call day old chicken may eventually become layer or cockerel and so on and so forth. So we mentioned here that's transformable. Then what kind of product can we can it be transformed into? We mentioned it here as well. Then what is the minimum number of days before it becomes transformable? We mentioned it here. Then transformation mode, we see more automatic or manual. That's what M and A, M slash A, what it means. If we say it's manual, we're saying we are going to look at the status of that product by period of time by ourselves, and then come and transform them to the new product manually on the system. If we say automatic, then we're saying system should look at the number of days. Once it reaches that number, once it reaches that number of days, they should transform the product into the new product. So that's what transform transform mode H A means. Then these other two flags are despicably for hospitality business, hotel, where products can belong to kitchen, can belong to bar. There are things these are also meant for. But when we are another hospitality business, it's better explain them. So this is where the product, all the items that we to be dealing with in the manufacturing industry are defined. Now, moving further, product type. Okay, sorry, this product type is uh, coming later than uh, where we're going to use it. Because on that product, we are going to indicate product type. So all the product types that you have are defined here. This is where we define whether the product is a raw material, whether the product is an intermediate product, whether the product is a finished product. Whatever we can see in the manufacturing industry as product type, we define them here. This is just for purpose of business. Very, very useful later when we go to services. 
acquire this one to product units code. I've mentioned it somewhere before, but this is where we define them. That is what we call the unit of measurement. Whether the product is measured in unit, that is counting one, two, three, four, five, or is measured in carton, dosing, and so on and so forth. We define all the various code, all the various code at this point, so that we can make use of them when defining products, when do we sell, when do we stock, and so on and so forth. So here you can see code name, quantity, product group. Now, general ledger. Sorry, I'm still looking at sales code. General ledger. Here, yeah, we really do the design of our accounting. I will expect our accounts to be reporting. I will expect a transaction posting to report in our general ledger. So, the first column there is talking about account use. This one is also something we we'll define somewhere. So we, we, we have decided to say, okay, from what I'm bringing up now, these are the basic accounting unit that we have under this branch called 001. We have finished products and work in progress. Those are the two units that have been defined, basic accounting unit. But then normally the account use is just like a choice. I think it's better explained when we have a template for accounting for any of the clients. But what we have here is that at least there should be an option of, okay, what this account is being used for. Like for the example I've given here, we have two things, finished products, have the code 1154, the work in progress, have the code 1153. This is accounting structure of the test we have done for a particular manufacturing industry. There are more than this. Because here at the what's available where you just say this place is where we define all of them. You define them, give the account use, and you give the uh, description, the product group, you mention the group that the product belongs to. Then if there's a subgroup, you mention it as well. Then account head. That is to say, which account does all the product under this group report to? That's what we account head. Then specific product that's going to make use of this. Make sure they have this product here, the, the account number that entries you go into, the account name, then whether the account should always be on the positive side or negative side. You need the balance in that account at any point in time. For people that understand accounting, they want to understand the So this is where we define our general ledger for manufacturing industry. Okay, accounting basic. <clears throat> now, accounting basic, just like what's I make use of data as well as account use. This is where we define all the basic of accounting. Yeah, as you can see here now, for a global accounting ledger that we have in the system, we have account code, non correct asset, account code, tangible asset, uh, account code, this land and building, plants and machinery. So these are all the various account use. Account use. So you can add more and more. So then you can see, you can see, then other bank, bank accounts. So the design is yours, it's user design. I mean, it's user defined. Every user of the application design whatever they want for their account use. Now, let me just do this. Let's, let me ask my pick one of this. The next thing they ask you, what group? Based on all the group could have been defined. Okay, there's no list here. You bring out the group. That this one belongs to. Then you enter the account head. Now, this is like subgroup, flip for back size. These are all subgroups. For the general group, this is subgroup of it. This is another subgroup of it. So, this is where we do the accounting basic definition or basic accounting definition. Then, expense definition. This is where we define all the various expense codes. Remember, expenses that we made in the industry or in the um, manufacturing uh, industry, we define all the various codes for our expenses here, which we make use of later. And what do we need to enter here? The expense, we give it a code, which is alphanumeric, description, what that expense is all about, something that readable, everybody can know what it is. Then the group code, 
said and then the group codes are defined to know which income does it go to, which expense does it go to, specific accounts and grouping. So group code must have been defined where I mentioned group code, you just select it from there. Then the game mode of expense, is it manual or automatic? Then frequency, this expense is something we take daily, we can, so we define expense code here with all the parameters I just mentioned now. Now, the next thing is auto bash generation. This is where we generate bash number for our finished product in the manufacturing industry. So for this specific uh, industry or for this specific company, the parameter to define the bash are given in this mode. The bash number is supposed to generate uh, using the product code, the type of the product, the month, the shift, that is the shift that produces that product, and then a line, items, then the year. So we can, this one is always specific to industry. So we can add more based on whatever parameter that goes into the batch generation for the next manufacturing industry that we're going to do implementation. But for this manufacturing industry, they have this parameter combined together to form the batch. So once you set it up here, the system generate the batch automatically, and you know what the batch number is, which can be used for various production items. But when we are producing items, the batch that I, the item we are producing belongs to is always generated from here. Okay. Now, these are the various definitions that need to be done for systems services to commerce. If there's another one after, we'll mention it and we'll show you where we can get it done. So we are assuming all this has been done and we want to go to what we have as services. Now, if you look at our services, they are just arranged in this order, raw material requisition, raw material issuance, raw material approval, product stock, product sale, NPO issuance, expense management, mobile vendor slash LPO payment, oh, sorry, mobilized vendor slash LPO payment. So what we're saying is that after the vision has been done, then the process of uh, production or manufacturing start from raw material requisition. This is what we need to do under raw material requisition. So we are assuming that all the various raw material types that were must have been defined under the product. So here we just make use of them. There's always a clue here in most of the fields where there is list of values that you can choose from. So you see for valid code, press control L. So I'm in this field now. If I do control L, it will show me all the list of products that are available in this industry with their various attributes. These are the first one here. 00017 is our product type F000. And this says price, the short name is per room. And then the cost price is 500. So what we're saying in essence is that all the products that have been defined in our system personally is what comes up here. So let me assume I want to use a specific product, I mean, specific, a product specific to this industry. Now, this industry, they make use of cello tape. So I pick cello tape and I do tap. The system say, help you fulfillment for raw material, cello tape cannot be found to receive the first price. So, what we're saying is that help you has been issued, yet to be fulfilled. So, we don't know what the first price is. So, we cannot go ahead and use this because if we go ahead, we will not be able to get the exact cost. So let me leave this. We'll come back to that because this is help. Okay, let's leave this. Since LPO is required, let's start the process for LPO issuance. Let's start from LPO issuance because from raw material, to make, for you to make request for raw material, we have some raw materials already in the store. So let's start from APO. For this LPO, mobilization details, new details. For here, biller code is talking about who is going to be billed for this LPO. Let me just, all this that comes up here, the manufacturers or supply maintenance, 
that we have in the system. The manufacturer or supplier that they maintain the system, I want to assign it. Let me take this as the biller code. You know, it comes up with a short name, full name, the biller address. That's the person that going to bill us for what we are going to ask to supply. That's why we call it biller code. This person is going to be given an invoice to supply something for us. And then I call him biller code. So what type of product do we assume? You don't want a two share PO4. You want to use share PO4 for raw materials. So you can see these are the product type in the system now, intermediate product, work in progress, raw material, finished product. So we are issuing an invoice or an LPO for raw material. So I pick this as product type, then receive our code. So who is receiving this thing we are issuing out? It also comes out with all the list of manufacturer. Or this manufacturer. Okay, I'm picking PhD as the one receiving what we have issued out. I see the PhD full name also came out, the short name came out, receiver address, and invoice date. Invoice date automatically carry the system date, in which case 23rd June system date. So it's carried to 23rd June. So if this invoice is not for 23rd June, then the date can be changed here. But you will first automatically pick the date for you and wait for you to either pick it or change it. So I do tap. Now, how many days do you expect this person to supply what you're asking for? Let's say in 30 days, they also supply it. The system has given the expiry date of the based on that number of days. Now, if you have issuing it for 23rd June, and you have to supply, then the expiry date is 23rd July 2022. Now, how, what currency are we going to sell to this supplier? See all the list of currency in the whole world is already coming shipped in with this application. So you just choose the currency. But most of convenience, since we're dealing with Nigerian products and we assume we're going to start with Naira, just type NG and it give you to Nigerian Naira. So you pick it and you move. Now here is certain to details. What are the details of the items we want this supplier to give us? You say it's raw material. So click on details. And that takes us to this table where we're going to enter the details of what you expect the customer to give us. Like I said, the same thing applies here. It's also on the fail bill code. What is that code? Product, this big code is like product code. What are we billing for? So is which product are we asking the supplier to give us? So there's also a list of values there showing up all the products that have been defined in the system. Remember, it's from material. So for the purpose of manufacturing for this company, we use, okay, this is for 004, which is called raw granite or roasted product. So this is a raw material. Now, in what measurement? So the first also in the system, A for crate, C for, A for place, C for crate, D for dosing gram. You must have defined this from where I earlier show under definition, what measure what measure of sales or salt. So for the most of these, I think it's in kilogram. So we want you to give us a kilogram and the price of kilo of this raw material, we have to enter it because we are the one giving the invoice out. We must have agreed with our supplier that is going to supply a social price. So whether the price, a unit price, let's say the unit price is 900 naira per kilo. And how many kilo do we ask for? We ask for 1,000 kilo shows the amount we're supposed to pay. Now, if you have more raw material, we just use down arrow button to move to the next line. Then we select another raw material that we are expecting this person to supply us. Now, let me look at what I'm going to choose again. Uh, let's assume that we're asking this man to give us uh, carton. Carton, so we're going to use carton to pack whatever we have, the finished products. So carton is in what? Look at what you have defined before because we must have defined for every item what the unit of, measure, unit of measurement is. So let's say we are doing this carton in dosing. It should give us 100 dozens. How much is per dozen? A dozen of carton is, say, 500 naira. Now, not being Possibly because we don't have 
Let me see. I don't know the price. I'm sure it could even compute dosing code. That dosing code is not properly defined. So let me leave that code dosing. I change it to unit. I miss working. I can see a better position. To check why the dosing atom so that product must have a problem. Maybe we'll check whether it's not different properly with price. So, we're supposed to multiply the unit with the price. I mean, we'll use the price to compute. So, impossibly, the price is not defined for cattle. We'll check it later. Let me pick another one. Let's say it's going to support syrup. Syrup is in unit. How many? 20. And then the quantity price for syrup is 100. You can see it composed that one correctly because if we're able to get the price, that's able to compute that correctly. So let's assume these are the three items what's going to supply us. And then we we'll have to save this. Transaction with future on authorized status, transaction by another user. What it means is that this cap of um, LPO in this organization. I've said it has to be dual transaction. Dual means no single person can initiate an LPO and complete it in the system. So for second person author, uh, authorization level to see what you have issued and certify it okay, the other person has to see. That's why it is prompting us the acknowledgement message that this transaction will be an authorized status until it's authorized by another user. Possibly that another user can authorize with a single person in the it's telling us that the LPO is created successful, and that's done. So once this is done, then for do authorization of that LPO insurance, we now need to go to authorization sub module here. Under that authorization module, we are authorizing LPO. So choose LPO. So here, the reference number has been generated for that LPO. So you just pick the reference number up and try to authorize it. These are all the items that are in an authorized position. But what I just did now is this. But one thing I wanted to see, I just want to see what happened here. Because this same person is the one that issued this LPO. That's the person I call user 001. I don't expect him to be able to do authorization at the same time because system told us that time that it required to assure by a second user. So let me say check details. These are the items that is being issued out. And if I say authorization, same user cannot input as authorized. Do our purpose will be defeated. Okay. So that means this will be authorized. So I have to go out and then log in the new user that have the capacity to authorize this. So I'm picking another user now that can possibly authorize this. With this, then the user will not go to this is manufacturing model. Authorization and then LPO. Then we do control L to see list of values there. And then we pick this number because it was another number. Yeah, I knew that number, so I was able to pick it. Now we now check details. These are the details of the item. You see here, this person that initiated you saw it, this way that's authorizing now. This way that log is not authorizing. Here I have, let me try to see what I can extend. Okay, good. So this is the entire screen. I can see the entire screen. Two transaction. This one because it doesn't have a price that's taking the price at zero at the transaction level. That is this carton that came with no price that time. So it's zero because for whatever they see, the amount didn't come up. But well, I will check what is wrong. I don't know now. Maybe the definition of that carton was not valid done. The system has realized that we have 900,000 for the first items, 2,000 for the second item. I mean, zero for the second item at 2,000. So the total amount is now about 2,000. So here, we're going to get approval done here. So once we say authorize, authorization is successful, then it's completed. So that means this IPO cannot be issued to the supplier. I think I need to check something. And each time we have this kind of IPO issued, it's supposed to be a, um, a report. I'm going to check that report now. Let me go into my system and check the report. If I can display it. 
Okay, I can see the API has been issued. So I will share my screen. I'll share this API has been issued. Okay. So I'm coming, I will share the API that has been issued. Now, the report of the IPO, though it's not properly formatted, but at least you can easily see it. So, I'm share, I'll share it now. Judging on this is share total Amazon around 2000. PhD food industry, this raw ground notes for this amount, then cut and then syrup. So this is this is the note that this invoice is valid for 30 days. Payment has been made on or before 23rd July 2022. So this is the IPO has been issued. Now, let's go away from here. Yeah. So we're coming back to the second screen. So that is LPO issuance completed. So the next thing after issuing LPO is to do what we call LPO fulfillment. There are two ways for help of men. Let's go back to our services. We have LPO issue has been completed. So we have mobilized vendor from LPO payment. So the, which, what we're seeing here is that this is where the LPO we have issued needs to be funded. So there are two ways. It can be funded in advance, that is pay the supplier for supplying, or at the other time, it might be supplier supply before you pay. So whichever option, a yeah, system is allowing you to do whichever one has come first. If it is payment that has come first, you come here to do mobilization for the customer because you are paying him first. And if the supply, you also come here and confirm that you are supply. So if I put here now, this is only LPO that has been issued and approved. It's only that came up here. All the IPO we saw that time, that's why they're not coming up. So say, these are the details. This dealer, this receiver, and then the balance of the IPO in terms of payment is now around 2000. I think we remember that. Then we have payment mobilized amounts. How much are we mobilizing the supplier? We enter it here. Once we enter it, the system will know. We can do partial uh, uh, mobilization, and likewise, we have partial fulfillment. So if I say I'm, I'm mobilizing this guy just now 100,000, and I do this, say this is to confirm. This confirming that you are making partial payment of the IPO amount, amount of 2,000 are standing on the IPO. Yes. So you allow me to go ahead. The balance amount of IPO is this. So it means we are paid partially to the supplier. If that information is intact, I always check them. Now here, what do we do here? Details. Is confirming that you are making partial again because we are not paying for it. So, what's the detail? That's the mobilization. So, we have mobilized the supplier. We have mobilized the supplier. Now, let's check again. What's the detail of the IPO? Detail of the IPO. Okay, remaining 2,000. Okay, let's say we are paying the remaining 2,000. On that time. Now, details. Now, I did details. Sorry, I missed the first time. I did details. We need to now mention what and what the supplier are going to give to us. Whatever he has brought in, we mention it here because we said it can be partial, it can be full. So let's assume these are the three items that we gave 
the supplier, the supplier was their bill for. So pick one after the other. Assuming you have supplied this, the 900, supposed to supply 1,000. $1, Whatever you have supplied, we indicate it here. You can see here, if you apply everything, we leave it, well, you know it's 1,000. But if you supply partially, say supply 800, we'll put 800 there. This is the price for that 100. And again, carton. Let's assume you supply the carton. That has no money. So you supply the carton 500. Then the third item, syrup. Let's assume I supply the syrup as well. The only thing they supply for is the rock and not. So with this, we now say, because we've already mobilized customer, he has paid, then we can save. for the safe, uh, safe icon. Okay, mobilize. Okay, start. I can't search for person entry field. I can't entry with source. Okay, let's talk about for each of these items now. So, so I can't update it. Fail, okay. That's the second time, except for third items. So with this, the customer and the customer supply items have been applied. Now, the OCRM is telling us that we did not maintain, that's our general legal accounting problem. For stock account, for this item that I mentioned there, maintenance of account has not been done properly. So we could not get there. Instead, a suspense account has been created along with the creation of the general ledger, we take all those entries. So with this, we say the customer has only supplied partially and we have made full uh, fulfillment, full payment has been made. Let's just see if we are still in order. It's still coming up. We need that. I see something left on this. At this stage now, this guy has paid everything. We paid everything, but he has not supplied everything. So we'll come back here and see what and what is remaining for you to supply. You can see this is only to remain that has not supplied fully. That's another that came up. And then how many is expected? Just 200. So that's one there. Let's assume you're supplying it now and then mobilize. So I can't search for passing entry field. I can't actually pass to suspend. Then because it's going to put this in stock. Once they supply this, it's supposed to go to the market to stock, and then the balance of stock account is supposed to reflect the amount of these items. So that's what Sam is saying when they say suspense account will be updated. So for this, it goes suspense account. So with this, if you try again now, you will see another. No other LPO that's unfulfilled, or this has been completely fulfilled LPO in terms of payment, in terms of uh, supply. Okay, that is what we do here under mobilized vendor through LPO payments. Remember, LPO issuance, then LPO authorization from here. After LPO authorization, then we come back to do mobilized vendor through LPO payments. And when that is done, that means the material has been supplied to us, our date, and that is done. So that raw material is available now. We can make raw material requisition for the purpose of production. <clears throat> now, I will just do raw material requisition and I will end the presentation there. Then we'll continue after that with other series of, uh, with, with another presentation on other steps required in the, in the uh, manufacturing process. Now, this raw material requisition now is here. I can, I remember what I've been supplied with. I can always choose them now. I have row 004. Let me look at the name. That's our product. Selected it. Buy us 1,200. So the stock price, I mean, stock price 1,200. That's what uh, I'm supply with. Now, here, when we are doing raw material acquisition, we indicate which product is the target product. That is, finished product are we targeting with this raw material? So we do a selection here, list of value. So what shall we? What are we uh, targeting? Roasted nuts. Roasted nuts are finished product. We select it and we'll do tab. 
batch number. For this product, what are the batch number available that have been generated that have not been used? Because we're going to break whole production in batches. So if there are other uh, any automatic generated, uh, automatically generated batch number that's not been used, then we just will control L to break it out. But now, list of value contain no entries, meaning that there is no generated batch number for this production we're about to engage is ourselves on. So we need to go back to our generation of batches. There's the batch number for this set of uh, production we want to do. And then we can go ahead with raw material requisition. Going back now to definition. Under definition, we have auto batch generation. So here, product, product is Want to produce that's finished product by line of this one is available for this course. So, <clears throat> what line I said it is we decide to give a line by ourselves. Let's say zero one this year 2022 because those are all the parameters. You can leave it out if you don't want anything. I know you system put nothing there, so everything by using we just change it. So, let's say this is for June. And then for first shift, generate 100 exception of call. Possibly I'll use what is invalid in case or maybe this month. For this month, supposed to be a number feed 06. Let's generate again. That requires 100 exception 06502. Need to know what and what uh, variables that I need to put in this place. I don't know how check again. Let's say line one. That's one the exception. Well, I need to check what is happening in past generation now. Okay. Uh, in any case, let me see. We also have auto, all the patches auto generation. Uh, we can use manner patch. If you want, but if I say we are going to use auto pass generation, they have to be auto pass generation. Let's check again. Products. I will check what is going there. Or not. That's roasted lot. One. Yeah. I think the I think problem has to do with the size. Shift one. I'll go and check that. Account. It gives indication of okay, it's correct. It has to do with size. What happened is that uh, the the line for past generation cannot accommodate what I've listed before. That year supposed to be just twenty third of two thousand twenty two. But in any case, I will try to do something now. I'll put what number of characters that's allowed on each field so that to guide you on entering the data. But this one is just user developed. Like I said, if you have defined it by that way, you should have known what to enter and you have know what to do. So you won't have made mistake. In any case, it's also good if you put int here. So when you are in the field, this field you have to select. But this way you have to enter anything and the number of value will guide you on what you can enter there. So a batch number will be generated now. So we can go back to use that batch number when doing product uh, raw material acquisition. Raw material acquisition, like we are, we are, this is where we want to end the first uh, presentation today. So we say we are going to uh, request for R O C W zero zero four, and our target product is roasted nuts. That's the finished product we are targeting. The batch number now. This only batch I've generated. This batch number I've generated. That's only batch number. So production. We have this batch number. You can see that's consumed the entire space. That's the maximum we can have there. Now we are on account code. What account code should be affected for this? For raw material, granot. This is raw material granot. So you pick this account code. Like I said, general ledger has been defined. Just come and pick what you have defined for it. For raw material account code, so you put this. Then driver name. Now, who is driving this production? That's the manager. Whoever is driving, put the name of the person there. Then work in progress account for this. You bring out the work progress account. This work progress account for granot. 
the unit code. In which unit? I know we're going to manufacture the kilogram. I mean, uh, sorry, the requisition is being kilogram. What's quantity? How many kilograms of granite are, are we using now? So we are still here. Man material upon which the estimated quantity is projected cannot be found. The main raw material. The main raw material upon which the estimated quantity is projected cannot be found. Tell them straight up. The diagram. I complete on this program. Let's check it again. The raw material is in. Okay, let's let's pick up. The main raw material upon which the estimated quantity is projected cannot be found. Another objective. Like I said, all our parameters has to be in order before we can get it right. I'll go and tell what is going on with this program. It's still complaining. Same as we unit. So that's a problem here. The main raw material upon which the estimated quantity. What is necessary that there is a standard. I think this uh, setup for this uh, manufacturing company setting up uh, a range that will guide the projected quantity. They put a projected quantity of each of these raw material. So for this, there is no positive relationship between what quantity of this you need for the finished product. So that's why it's giving us the salary because it's supposed to be a kilogram. We check that and then we'll correct it so that we can complete this transaction. That will be that's where we're going to start in our next presentation. Thank you very much for your listening audience. We'll go back to show you the continuity the continuity of the video uh, in due course. Thank you very much.